Hello everyone, I am Jeff Bell for Ghost Hat Designs, and welcome to the first episode of the first show, pretty much ever, on our brand new YouTube channel called Poster Breakdown. Now, what is Poster Breakdown, you're asking yourself? Actually, you're probably not asking yourself because you read the title, and you're an average human being, and you're well aware what Poster Breakdown is. Basically, I'll explain it in, I guess, more detail if you just like hearing me talk. I take a poster that myself or Ghost Hat Designs has created for an individual or just for fun, and I show you a little bit more of what went into making that poster. So, for example, this first premiere episode, I am taking the 10th Doctor's poster that I created for the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, and I'll show you a little bit behind uh, what, you know, what went into it, what, we, what I did to make it. Not a very complicated poster, and that's specifically why we figured this would be a great first episode. We're going to start with something simple, and then as we go along, we'll get into more harder posters and more work and ones that take longer to have actually assembled. Now... If you did in fact see these, I did create all 12 doctors. Now, what are you saying? You're, 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 I hear you out there going like, well, what do you mean 12? Because Peter Capaldi's the 12th doctor and he hasn't even aired. But I don't see Peter Capaldi in this list here. But, well, see, that's, that's the thing. Remember, the war doctor was not actually a numbered doctor. Yeah. So the war doctor does count towards my list of 12 doctors. That's the type of nerd I am. So get ready for this excitement, it's going to be fun. Anyways, as you can see on this series of posters, I created one for all the original Doctors. Now, the Doctor uh, Who series that I started was originally just 9th, 10th, and 11th. I, uh, I did for fun, I did the 9th Doctor, which is Eccleston, and I'm like, you know what? That was kind of fun. I wanted It was a test. I had never done this style before. I'm not very, I was never very good at Vector. I still am not the world's greatest, so I'm slowly working and slowly building up my uh, my uh, my ability to recreate posters and designs in this style, style and it's... Yeah, it's a little tough. Anyway, so, but after I finished Eggleston, I'm like, well, I gotta move on to Tenet, of course. And then I'm like, well, of course, I gotta do Matt Smith. So I did these three right here. And I released them, and after I got done doing them, I'm like, you know what? It might actually be kind of fun to do the rest of the Doctors. I did the most recent, so why do I feel like I need to, you know, you know, shun away from the original Doctors to start a series? So I went back, and I started the first Doctor, and I worked my way through all the original doctors here so you know we got tom baker and we got colin baker and then we have sylvester mccoy you know and then obviously my favorite doctor paul mcgann and then the new war doctor what i actually did is i jumped to the war doctor i think somewhere around tom baker i think i skipped these four and i got a lot of people who were really wondering whether i was ever going to finish the series because they saw that i went from four to technically eight and a half <laughs> and i'm like and i'm like no, no no no, don't worry i'm coming back come back so but they're all done in this very similar style my concept behind this series was that let's take a uh let's take let's take the doctor let's throw him over on the right hand side let's never show his face because you know what he's the same person no matter what form he is in but i'm like let's highlight the costume that they wore and then let's take one of either like the brand new villain or the biggest villain you know in that doctor's run so some of these were like obviously the Dalek I did the Dalek for the first Doctor because that was the first time you ever saw the Dalek and then I you know I did these guys for this one the Master showed up during the third Doctor I'm like let's do the third Doctor you know I, I kind of kept going through uh, each time and then obviously for the eighth Doctor here with the movie it was just the Master it was really the villain but like the Cybermen showed up here for Sylvester McCoy I'm like let's do them and you know but then obviously here okay so here's a great example the Daleks and the Cybermen are both used twice but they're so different in look that's why I figured it was okay to do that style. You know, let's just have a little fun. Anyways, let's move on to the actual poster. So here's the 10th Doctor. I figured David Tennant's the one that everybody likes the most, so that may be wrong. Don't yell at me. Obviously, as I said, all the Doctors are represented, but uh, I figured this one would be the one that uh, probably I seem to get a lot more interest in the David Tennant one, so that's why I figured I would do it. Now, let's start working on this poster. So what I did, obviously, I started off with a color. I wanted solid colors. I did not want shadings. I don't mind shades of gray. And my original concept was the entire thing was not going to be in color, except for the colored background, which reflected the creature itself. I kind of threw that out the window once I started working with these. Some of them still are similar, like the War Doctor's brown because it was a primarily brown. But a lot of these colors, like, okay, obviously he's green and then he's green. The Master wasn't really necessarily purple. And Tom Baker's I pulled from his scarf. And these are the ones I was just trying to find colors that were complimentary but initially i'm like let's start with the we'll start with the background color and then what i did is because i was not very good at creating the actual people i used a lot of photo references in order to create these so what we'll do is get in here as you can see i got these guys both separated on their own layers so that we can overlap them we'll start with mr david Tennant here the 10th doctor now you're like oh my god there's all these big white space that is because my reference initially 
was, oh, see, there you go. So I used this photograph right here. This was my, my, my decent, you know, it's really actually kind of low res, but the nice thing is, is because we're working with vector shapes to create this design, that uh, the, the graphic did not need to be ultra high res because you could, you know, you know, as long as you could see where's the edge, where's, you know, where's the, where to cut out and basically where to trace. Because that's all we're doing with these posters. We're tracing out the characters. Uh, the reason why this is so big, I at one point contemplated having him actually in his trench coat, but I realized that it, it just didn't look right. So I ditched the trench coat concept and just went with him in his basic outfit. So what we did is I went through here. Let's turn the doctor right. And obviously I knew exactly where I needed it to be. I didn't need I didn't need all of his body. So I did not trace all of his body. I traced a little bit more than what you see in the final uh, sample here. But what I did is I started going through. Let's turn off all these bad guys off. There we go. Traced traced his uh, initial shape. Now I, I kind of fudged his hair a little bit. I kind of took like liberties to what exactly how much of his hair. But I wanted to get that kind of messy look because that's very much so part of him. And it's one of those where you see it and go, oh yes, that's Tenet. It's got kind of the messy hair. Matt Smith kind of touched on it a little bit, but he had more of like this giant pompadour. So what I did is basically I traced that. And then I went through and I slowly kind of, I, I broke down what were the different shades and different colors that I wanted. So I got his jacket here. I know I have the inside of his shirt collar. I know I have his tie here. So that was kind of my general shapes. And as you see, and also I did on every single one of these, almost every single one of these doctors had some kind of a lapel that whether or not it's uh, easy reckon, he did not have it, but I'm pretty sure, oh, after three. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I made out to be a complete liar. Was it Tom Baker that started having it? Yeah, it was Tom Baker. So starting with four and moving onward, every doctor had some kind of a lapel. So I always broke it down to those four elements. I did the jacket, I did the lapel, I did the inside shirt, and then usually a form of a tie or something, except for Eccleston. Eccleston wanted to be different. Uh, <laughs> he's hip. But every other doctor has something else going on underneath his jacket one way or another. So we traced out his main body, then we traced out his uh, jacket, then we did his undershirt. Now it's, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect here because I knew the lapel was going to go over top of all of that. So it's going to cover up all those hard edges. So I didn't have to worry about trying to get these, you know, exactly accurate because I knew this was going to cover up and, and blend them all together. And then I just did his tie. Now what I did is, I, as you can probably see here, I contemplated for a little while adding in the stripes of his jacket. And that's, I toyed with it and I was never really happy with it. I started working on it and started building it. And I just, I didn't, I didn't like the way this was looking. Now I might want to go back to it later nowadays and maybe I can figure out a way for it to work. But I just, I didn't like it. It made the, made the piece of work too busy. And when the main goal of this design was just to kind of go with very simple and very solid colors, the stripes just, I felt like it added too much to it. Now, granted, you could argue that, you know, Tom Baker's scarf is too detailed or, you know, Peter Davies, Davison's is, is got too much detail in it. And, you know, obviously he looks like a clown. I'm sorry if I insulted your favorite doctor. I'm not meaning to. I'm just saying like their outfits were very bright and very detailed. So I, you could argue that that's the stripes on here would not have been too detailed compared to the other doctors. And maybe, maybe one day I'll go back, but I just decided to skip it. However, I did have this design uh, initially without his glasses. So if we go back in here and we let this save and update, those glasses will go away. So that was the original design I had. And it was around this time that I realized I'm like, well, you know, it does kind of look like Tenet, but I wanted to originally do the 3D glasses, but I know that's a huge aspect of Doctor Who that people freak out about. Cause I'm a, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, but I've had this argument with people because people are like, it's only been in one or two episodes he wears the 3D glasses and that's it. That's not his staple. There's so many other things you could do. So it's, I'm like, all right, well, fine then. He started wearing his glasses after a while. So I found a reference photograph of his glasses, him wearing his glasses. So again, not very high res whatsoever. I mean, that's at 100% quality. You can see all the compression because I blew it up to, to fit. And I overlaid it on top of his head. You know, doesn't have to be perfect because we're not going to go super detailed, but that's pretty much same size eyeball a little off or so and then i traced out his i traced out his glasses and truthfully that's it that made the entire the entire doctor that little bit of detail on there actually helped really cement that this was in fact the eighth or sorry it was the tenth doctor oh i'm sorry paul mcgann's on the head i apologize uh but that really cemented that that was the tenth doctor because there wasn't you know, he, he was the, out of the new ones at least, that he was the one that wore the glasses until Matt Smith eventually started wearing the glasses later on in his series. So, but I did that. I'm like, great. That's, that's the doctor. 
So I started working on the Cybermen. Cybermen's very, very similar. Let me close some of these extra guys here. Cybermen's very, very similar. What I did is I found a really nice, nice good photo of the Cybermen uh, way down here. That's my sample photograph that I went off of for, for all the design. As you can see, I actually, I spent a lot of time working on finding the general shapes, finding the, the, the outlines, finding the basic contours of the face without going too detailed, but at the same time, not doing, you know, not, not going under detail. Cause there was a point where I'm pretty sure like I didn't have that piece in there for a little while. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's okay, but there's just, it was something missing. And that's when I went back in and I had another layer and then trying to find like the right balance of the colors. Like, you know, how light do you make this part? Do you make this part darker? And like that, that whole thing was just, that it's it's a very fickle balance. Now I did this is one of the few occasions, and I think the Dalek for Eccleson's I did this, and I know for the silence in Matt Smith's, I think I put yeah I put shading in the eyeball right there, and then on around the eye uh, around the the head there, uh, and I think yeah on the Dalek right there, I did put some shading. Now that shading I foregone with on all of the other. Uh, creatures. I did not do any kind of shading on any of the other ones, so there is a slight difference between these three and then all the other guys afterwards. I just I I did it here. I don't necessarily need it, so we could technically probably remove that drop shadow and just make it a solid piece. Now, again, that comes down to the concept of well, is it is it is it better to not have those uh, those shading in there? Let's let's actually just take a look. Look, we're experimenting on the first episode. See, that that's not bad. It still works. It you still get the idea that these are different pieces. Uh, it's just when I did it, it, you know, yeah, I had the shadow on there. So it's up to you. It's your decision. Obviously, the nice thing about it, you know, art is that you you don't have when you're creating it yourself. You don't have anybody who's telling you what is right and what is wrong. Obviously, you can make the Cybermen look however you want. But I was kind of doing it to appease some of the fans myself included i would it would have bugged me if i did not make it look like this so but i went through i did each layer at a time same way as i did tenant i started with the base design here started very very simple very uh straightforward just the basic outline for it and then just kind of slowly built up the different layers the different shapes that i saw uh overlaid them on top of each other so that way like i said obviously i knew like you're only going to see that little bit there you know, that's the shadow for the bottom part. And then here we just go. We start start building up all these individual pieces and how detailed you wanted to go. That's your call. That was, you know, my decision was to stop right here. I could have made a really nice, realistic looking Cybermen with all the correct shading. I just didn't want to. That was not, again, that was not the point of the original design. So I got to that point. I picked my color on here. It was very fickle trying to figure out the right color for this background. I kind of I kind of bounced around for a little bit. I kind of went, you know, a little too dark for a while. I kind of went a little too white and bounced around with solid gray. I actually ended up choosing a kind of bluish tint to a gray. Now, we could have gone straight over there and done that gray because that is very Cybermanish, but I liked the slight blue tint because that worked for the Cybermen. It's a little more colorful. It's not just a straight black and white one. I did the black and white one for the first doctor because the first doctor was on black and white like the tv episodes are black and white for the most part so it's like I, I did that for a reason i did that stylistically because that is how the world saw doctor who when it first started but for this because i the blue also worked just to give it a little more color a little more pop and it also kind of referenced and hints to the blue suit that the 10th doctor wears every once in a while in the series so i, I kind of figured that was a nice kind of equal balance between the two now it's not his blue i'm well aware of that but it's a nice kind of a starting point. Then at this point, uh, what I had designed for Eccleston's poster was to have his catchphrase and then the Doctor Who logo during that Doctor's time, along with 50 years and then the, the year, two, you know, 1963 to 2003. And then I figured I'd put BBC on here and then throw my little credit on the bottom. So I continued that portion. Now, Doctor Who's logo between the 9th and the 10th Doctor stayed the same. It wasn't until... Uh, Russell T. Davies kicked over, uh, Matt Smith kicked over, that they, they changed the logo of Doctor Who. So these first two kind of are identical. We get a similar feature to the 8th Doctor and the War Doctor, but then, like, the uh, the 7th Doctor had his, oh, God, had his really ridiculously over-the-top, like, 80s logo. And then we got, like, the, the these two guys have the same similar logo, but then Tom Baker kind of had his own, and then... You know, going back to these older guys here, they're all kind of very similar. I do know all their names. I'm just spacing on them right now, and I don't want to call them the wrong name and have tons of fanboys mad at me. So that's the reason why I'm not calling them all by their name. I'm sorry. Uh, John Pertwee is number three. I, I know them all, trust me. 
So what we did is I went back and I did that whole thing. Now the the text that we use, I wanted a very nice clean uh, font. This Oswald regular, I I really liked it. I did not pick Oswald regular because Clara Oswald in the you know Matt Smith era. Even though I do like her, she's my favorite companion. Um, it just I liked I liked the way that this font looks. I use this for a lot of the different stuff that I do. It's just a really nice clean font, except for the exclamation point. The exclamation point's a little wonky right there. I never noticed that till just now. Huh. Anyways, and then for the logo itself. I actually did a very similar thing as what I did for the doctors. I recreated the logo. So the logo, I I found a, a version of the logo because I couldn't find one that was just clear black and white. I had to find one that that was just like a screenshot from one of the episodes. I threw it on and then I retraced it. I found, found a very similar font for it. I actually did recreate every single one of the Doctor Who logos uh, by taking the existing font and then retracing over top of it. So like that one was a huge pain in the butt to do. And I know that they're out there, but I couldn't find one that was a really nice, clean, sharp versions of any of these logos. They were all kind of a little goofy. Actually, I think this one was the only one that I found a nice, good, uh, clean uh, EPS file of that worked for the poster. But most of those other ones I created from scratch just to make them work right. But it was a really simple shape. Basically, it just started off with like an oval, you know, just kind of basically took that and then just tweaked these uh tweak these ending pieces down here so that way they were they were closer to the to the shape of the doctor who poster well yeah 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 whatever uh so like you know hey look there look now we have like a nice little sharp corner so just basically really simple to do not a very complicated uh process to recreate this logo the earlier ones yes definitely but then that was it that was the entire poster now i did that again i did that for every single one of these guys it took me about a year maybe a year and a half of working i i took huge breaks like i took a giant break between sylvester mccoy and the eighth doctor probably about three months or so but these guys i did in about two months kind of just working on and off again i wasn't trying to go really highly detailed for any of them i wanted to kind of keep that cartoony look and uh, i feel like the series was a fairly good success for the poster uh, a lot of people actually question why the eighth doctor or sorry the war doctor uh, is himself on both sides and well, if you didn't see the 50th anniversary special, uh, I'm not going to spoil that for you. So, yeah. Spoilers! No, uh, just think about it, guys. Um, but no, so that was that was a very successful series. It was a very, very simple concept, and I had never done anything like that, and that was why I wanted to do this. I had done similar ones for my Cornetto Trilogy posters and my Back to the Future posters where I used this vector line art, but I wanted to try people because all of those posters were shapes. So it's kind of nice to you know, stretch my wings and try something different. So, hey, that's all for this episode. I will try to find a couple more posters and we'll keep doing this again. If you guys know any of the work, if you want, go over to ghosthat.net and go to the design section to check out some of our other work and what we can do. We offer doing this type of stuff for anybody, any independent company, any film production crews or anything like that. We will we'll, we'll make posters for you, you know, for a, a cost, obviously. I love doing this stuff, but... I also do it for a living, so that's why I'm doing these posters, just to kind of throw myself out there and let you guys see what kind of goes behind some of these these designs that we make, because we get a lot of people who ask us how we do. So definitely go check that out and keep an eye out for more episodes of Poster Breakdown, plus a few other shows that we're in the process, one of which will be a poster series where I actually create a poster from scratch on video for you guys. So suggest a genre, leave that in the comments below of this video, and then the first genre I get, I'll go ahead and do that for the next uh, the next poster series. So yeah, so that's all folks. Thank you very much for watching and have a great and amazing day. Bye-bye.